What does the Bible say about Jesus? And what do the cults say about Jesus? And how do they differ from one another today on Hot Topics? Hi, this is Robert Furrow. If you're new here, consider liking, subscribing, sharing, and ringing the bell so you can get all of our new videos. The comment section is open below. We would love to hear from you. Today, we wanna consider what the cults say about Jesus. And we wanna do that by looking at two of the main cults, what the Mormons say about Jesus and what the Jehovah Witnesses say about Jesus and how that differs from what the Bible says. Just because someone uses the name of Jesus doesn't mean that it's the Jesus of the Bible or the Jesus of the Godhead. In fact, the Jesus of the Mormons and the Jesus of the Jehovah Witnesses and other cults that look like they're Christian, but they're really not because of how they deal with the person of Christ so that we want to make sure that we are believing in the Jesus that is the Jesus of the Bible, the Jesus of the scriptures. Paul told the Corinthians not to accept another Jesus. In 2 Corinthians 11, 3 and 4, it says, But I fear, lest somehow, as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he who comes preaches another Jesus who we have not preached, Or if you receive a different spirit, which we have not received, or a different gospel, which you have not accepted, you may put up with it well. He's saying to them, if somebody comes to you teaching something different, a different Jesus, you might receive that different Jesus. Just because someone uses the name of Jesus doesn't mean that they believe in the same Jesus. This is true with both of these cults that we're talking about today. In Galatians 1, 6 through 10, Paul said, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you into the gospel of grace to a different gospel. One of the things that you find with the different cults that teach different things is that they usually have a legal system. You are winning your salvation by the things that you are doing. Paul was amazed that the Corinthians were turning away from the gospel of grace. He then goes on to say, which is not another. It's not, it's not another good news. The gospel means good news. It's not another. But there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But if we, or an angel of heaven, preach any other gospel to you, then what has been preached, let him be accursed. He was saying, there's nothing to be added. The Watchtower magazine, the Book of Mormon, no other religion comes up with anything else that has to be added to the Bible. 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All scripture is given by the inspiration of God, is profitable for reproof, for correction, for doctrine, that the man of God would be thoroughly equipped, lacking in nothing. That means that we have everything that we need in scripture. And we don't need anything that anyone comes along and says, I've received a full version or I've received a more complete version or you don't have the complete version because you don't have what we have. Let's consider quickly what the Mormons and the Jehovah Witnesses teach about Jesus. The Mormons believe that Elohim was a human somewhere and that he lived the Mormon life so well that he became a god and Elohim got his own world and that he has a wife and that they create spirit people. And then those spirit people enter into bodies. And one of those spirit people was so spectacular that Elohim chose him to be the savior of the world, and that would be Jesus. Also, there was one that was so bad that he became known as Lucifer. Also, they believe that all people are spirit brothers and sisters. But that doesn't take away from the strangeness that they believe that the angelic realm and people are all part of these spirit beings that were created that were preexistent before they were put into bodies. And that is radically different than the Jesus that we find in the Bible, which is the creator. All things were created by him, for him, and through him. We'll see more about that in just a minute. The Jehovah Witnesses believe that Jesus was created and that before he was created, he was Michael the Archangel. And then he became Jesus, became the Savior of the world, and then became Michael the Archangel again. They also believe that he was the first one created and then Jesus created everything, that Jehovah chose him to create the world and then he created everything. The Bible teaches us something radically different about Jesus. If you're trusting in the Jesus of the Jehovah Witnesses or the Jesus of the Mormons or any other cult that is out there that teaches something different about Jesus, then you're not trusting in the one who can truly save you. The Bible teaches us about Jesus, that he is God. 
John 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The Jehovah Witnesses changed that verse to say he was a God, but that's not what it says in the Greek. And then it goes on to say that everything was created by him, for him, and through him. And without him, there was nothing that was created. And in John 1, 14, it says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld the glory of the father. Hebrews chapter one, verse eight, God calls him God. He says, God, your God has anointed you. And he's quoting an Old Testament passage where God calls Jesus God. And that's when the Jehovah Witnesses say that Jesus isn't God. I like to tell them God called him God. So if God called him God and you tell me he's not God, I think I'll listen to God. Isaiah 7, 14 says, Behold, I give you a sign. A virgin shall conceive and bear a child, and he will be called Emmanuel, which is God with us. And then later on in Isaiah 9, 6, we're told that a child is going to be born. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. A child who would be born would be called Mighty God. Also in the book of Revelation, Jesus speaking, he says, I am the first and the last, the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. I am the one who was alive and died and am alive forevermore, the almighty. He claims, himself claims to be the almighty. Jesus also said when he was talking to the Pharisees, Abraham longed to see my day and he saw it. And before Abraham was, I am, which is a play upon the name of God given to Moses at the burning bush. They said, you are not yet 50 years old. And you say that Abraham rejoiced to see your day. That's when Jesus said before Abraham was, I am claiming to be the great I am and to be preexistent before Abraham. Micah 5, 2 is that prophecy that tells us that the Messiah is going to be born in Bethlehem, that a ruler is going to come out of Bethlehem, even though they are an insignificant village. At the very end of that verse, it says, his days would be from everlasting. That is, that child that would be born, that would be the savior, would have days that would be from everlasting. It just doesn't mean preexistent, as the Mormons would say, but it literally means from everlasting, so that we see the God of the Bible is Yahweh. We even see that in the very beginning of the book of Genesis, in Genesis 1, 25 and 26. It says, let us make man in our own image. Who is the us and who is the are? That's the complexity of God all the way back in the book of Genesis. And then it says, and so he made man in his own image. The Bible tells us that God is one God. There is one God, three in persons. And the Bible teaches this clearly. And when some group, cult, religion, denomination begins to teach something different, they're bringing you a different Jesus. Just because it has the same name doesn't mean it's the same. It is indeed different. And you want to trust in the Jesus of the Bible, the Jesus that created the world, that is the express image of the living God. Hope this video has been helpful to you. If you like it, click the like button. We'll see you next time.